project for now, for probably a little while anyhow, is going to be a coat. Um, I saw a picture on the internet of a, um, I don't know what height it was. It was deer skin, buck skin, elk, moose. I don't know. Well, I don't think it was moose. Um, I don't have any idea what height it was, but um, it was lined. It was um, looked like a Native American design on it. I'll get some pictures of it and stick in here. And I really liked it. Um, of course, it wasn't made from a pattern that I am aware of. So, I'm going to make a coat. <clears throat> Closest I could come to was this from Folkwear. Um, period cracked. Because I'm thinking this is going to be a, you know, early 1800s era is what I'm shooting for. So, um, here's a pattern. This comes with two options. An A and a B. This was A doesn't have a lot of the extra stuff that the B does. Um, there's some things on the B that I like. Um, but So anyway, yeah, here. So it, it's basically... Um, get you a little closer here. It's basically a, uh, a duster. I call it a drover's coat but it's a duster what I would call a duster so I'm going to use coat view A pattern but I want the cape back here on it I don't want the, the little tabs I'm going to do away with those I don't like those pockets so I'll do my own wherever um, and it's too long, so I'm going to see what I can do. So I took the, the pattern, um, got the size that I need, M for my size, and, um, cut that, the pattern out, the pieces that are required to make what I want, which is obviously... The cape, the collar, the sleeves, so there's two sleeves, and then the uh, body of the coat, and I'm, I want to line it too. And this comes with, and I chose this one specifically because it comes, the pattern will do a lining. So, um... I'm going to see what I can do and show you what I'm going to use. I have five, five of those hides. Um, they're golden uh, mountain, golden mountain sheep um, hides. I have five of them. There's other leather up there, um, but I have five. Two are pretty good sized. There's a small one and a couple of medium-ish ones. And before I head down that road of trying to build it out of leather first, I, um, like I said, I cut out my pattern. And then I've got some canvas. Um, I figured it would be a good thing to use to kind of do a first run at it and get some guessing going on and try to put it together. And... Then I can use that and go, okay, what do I need to do to shorten the length on it? And are the sleeves too long? Are they too short? Are they too loose around the, you know, around the wrist? Because if they come with these straps, that makes me think that you got to pull them up to bunch them up. I don't want it real, real loose. So that'll give me a chance to 
kind of guess how things are fitting together and and then if I need to change the pattern a little bit there because I'm thinking instead of coming clear down here halfway between your knees and your foot I'm kind of thinking somewhere around mid thigh and that's that'll save me a significant amount of leather and I'm gonna line it or I think I am anyway and um, we'll see if this actually turns out to be anything worth worth uh, worth wearing, but I sure want to give it a try. All right, here's my mock-up. And what I did was I used um, the cheapest um, drop cloth that I could find. Um, no pockets. I didn't put pockets on it. I didn't. Here's the cape. Um, but what I did was um, I just cut out my pattern for a size M and um, just let it. What I'm going to do is now make it out of leather. Um, I, what I'm going to do is um, shorten it 18 inches and use the pattern as it is with the exception of I'll do my own pockets um, and then the cape is a temporary cape or uh, removable so it's supposed to have straps that go under the arms and fasten back here I don't want it to be that way so what I'm going to do is under the collar is where when I get it assembled and then start assembling the collar I'm not going to put this piece on here on the cape I'll just bring this up capture it under the collar um, when I sew the, this on and then I can go ahead and come inside and um, finish up my collar along here and then it will be um, permanent. Okay, now I am moving on from my mock-up where I made a lot of mistakes and learned how this pattern goes together. Um, I now am, have my modified pattern which I just uh, removed um, 18 inches off of the bottom here. And the what I have done is um, laid, laid the pattern and found a spot on the hide big enough um, and the bottom is not. As you can see, we're going to have I, um, this live edge at the bottom. And so what I've done, I've already marked this, but I threw it back on here. Um, I just got these uh, samples of flooring from Home Depot um, and just I use those for various things because um, they're cork and you, can, you know like you can put it all on there and poke holes with it and go into that but anyway I, they were free samples so I grabbed up some and I use those for weights to hold the pattern and I just took a marker uh, and went around and marked it um, and um, this is the front and we're going to be not all the way down to 18 inches there. And what I did was I marked on the pattern. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Oops. I marked the line here and the kind of the flow of this bottom. I did it on this end and then I did it on the other corner over there um, which is the back. So and the reason I did that is when I went to move the pattern onto another piece of hide I can amongst trying to dodge holes and line everything up you know to fit 
um, I can find a spot that the front won't look too far off in the back where that seams together on the very back um, will look nice. Well, I hope. That's the goal. And so I've, I've marked that. Um, and so here's what we've got. And, I've, and I turned it upside down, um, the hide, um, because I, this is, I'm calling, I'm using this as the back, which is the pretty, pretty side, the smooth side, but I want the rough outside. So, um, now, I'll just take a pair of scissors and cut it out. Now here, oh, and then you got to remember this, and then you, when you mark this one, when you move to your next piece, you have to turn the paper over to get a mirror image for left and right sides on, on this piece, um, which is, uh, like I said, this is the front and this is the back. And so here's the side and that the V is right there where your sleeve goes. And I did manage one hole. I was unable to dodge, but it's very low on the bottom. Um, so on the bottom front, um, this um, pattern comes with two sets of directions and we're kind of mixing and matching and coming up with our own special coat. Um, so uh, we've got, we're skipping over pockets. Um, we're not putting on any of the um, arm tabs to buckle that tight. We're sp strictly going to go with, we're starting with um, view A. Um, and we're going to delete those we already talked about. Delete those little tabs right here and delete these pockets. Um, we've already chopped this off to make it short. Er. Um, but we also want some parts out of this one, um, the cape. And so we're going to have to go between this set for view A and coat view B. Yeah, right sides together, stitch underarm seam of sleeve, matching notch, notch one. So what basically what we're doing here is right sides together. And I want this rough outside. So this is my right side, my correct side, my pretty side. And we're gonna fold it. And we've got tabs right here that we're going to line up as best as possible and we're going to line this up up here and then we're going to take I've got these clips I borrowed them, they're not mine or from my wife and the key places we really want to make sure stays lined up is right here, these tabs and so we're going to squeeze that and well, we want to make sure that that we're flush right here is where they should be lining up and we're going to put that little squeezer on there and the other place that's really important is up here at the top we do not want this off at all it has to be perfect otherwise when we try to weasel in our sleeve into the arm thing, it ain't gonna go. It won't be pretty. It won't work. It'll look stupid and probably won't even line up enough that we can even use it. So we want to make sure that that is as perfect as possible and um, I have already and see how he, this is offset here at the top. Um, we've got more tabs that we're going to line up um, as we go. I'm going to start here 
at the armpit stitch down like we just talked about there we go here's our sleeves um, no matter how hard I tried I wound up top stretched beyond that um, that was the first one I did here's the second one that I did same thing not as much this one we got off just a little bit on our it moved enough there this one however Stayed pretty good, so I'm thinking that most of my stretch came down here as I was yanking around. But <clears throat> that's okay. We can fix that when we deal with whatever we do on the sleeves. Uh, just these shears, I'm just gonna cut. About like that. So, um, so I don't have such a bulky seam. I don't know. I may kind of go a little bit less deep and get that cleaned up. Um, so that's the next step. Um, it does not call for that in the recipe book, but that's not, they're not using leather in that book. So I do know from personal experience that if we trim this down, then it'll be a lot nicer seam once we turn it in the right side out um, won't be quite so bulky so that's the reason I am doing it at the top so it's got a little bit of extra monkey business going on there but so what nobody will ever see it you know look at the imperfections in the hide when it was finished up it's interior so. that's what I decided to do um, and in the directions when we go to install this on the, the body it will have it doesn't tell you to turn this right side out but you have to. So we can do that now. And that's what our our sleeve is gonna look like. And um, we can go ahead and do the turn the other one right side out or we can hammer this seam a little bit um, to kind of flatten it out um, since in the direction book it tells you to iron it I think which we don't iron leather so we got to hammer it so we'll do that in a little bit that was pretty easy What do you think? Well, that's the two sleeves. And um, this actually is the inside, which would run right down here along your elbow. It's not like that. This actually looks like you could use it for a pair of pants if you had short legs. Um, but anyway, so this will hang up from the shoulder. This is the shoulder. Here's where we're at now. So we are taking the hide we have cut for 
our side, our front and our back, our side or whatever you want to call it, the body. And I've got it draped over the table. And the flat side ish right here. This is the back side. And the front has got that up to do right there. And it also tells you the matching the notches. Okay, there's one notch here, and then there's two right here. And the two always means the back in the directions. It doesn't say that, but, well, I say always. I don't know that it does always, but I was told, my wife said that that's the case. So if there's two here, this is the back, which lines up with the back there. And there's that first notch. Now, we're going to have our... So if that's the back, and then that's the front, and this is the inside then that means this is the right side of the coat. So we're going to need to put the right sleeve, the sleeve that we want for the right, in there. Okay, we want to lay our sleeve kind of like so. And this gives us our center point in the armpit. Here's the center point. I took an ink pen and put a mark there. You can just guess anyhow, I'm sure. But and so the recipe says to put right sides together. So that's where you get to turn it in, to turn it right side out. If you didn't, you would I think would be a lot di more difficult to assemble this. So that's important that this matches up. So we start right there and we grab our clip and we clip that tight. Now this has a little you whoop de doo ski slope there which matches to the top corner of this. I know it doesn't seem like that that's right and what in the heck is going on but that's the correct way. That is correct. So we want to clip that real good. We want that to stay, because if this corner is off, when we go to put the rest of it together, we're going to have a fit. Same way over here. This comes clear up here. The very corners, the corner of Right here, let me move this camera a little bit. So, this is the the point on that gosh dang it, point on the sleeve. There's that little skew slope, and we're putting our pretty sides or finished sides together. We want this to match perfectly because this is going to be up there in that collar area around your neck and if it isn't right nothing's going to line up so there we have that now we have these teeth marks to line up and I believe that you're supposed to go in between it doesn't say it just says line them up but we're going to assume that's what they're thinking. That's ballpark how I tried it when I did my mock-up with my canvas. And over here, same thing. We got two and one on these little teeth. Let's stick them together. Make sure that we're pretty much flush on each side. Line them up. Give them a good pinch. And now it's not, it does it just really doesn't look good. And because it ain't done, it ain't done. So now we've got all this extra here. We gotta try to I'm gonna start on this side over here because it seems like it probably 
easier. So we've got to get these to line up and, and kind of somewhat of a fashion to where, just like what we did on those sleeves, that these pieces are relatively flush as we can get. And it's not going to want to sit in there nice and perfect because it's a curve. So we're going to just kind of pick a few spots You can see, I figure a better way to line that up so you can see. So, there, that does a pretty good job. Now we're too tight. So, here's the armpit, a center seam on our pencil mark, our teeth marks right there. Putting a difference on those peaks. That's maybe they're little mountain peaks. Um, but so now this the front. Uh, I think this is the front. Is not you know it's gaping. Yeah, it's got you know. We, so we're just gonna start trying to pull and get things to adjust, maybe pull the outside to get it stretched, well that doesn't, um, type of a thing, and, um, you know, probably that's about what we're going to have to do, pull, and be nice to have a third hand, but I don't, so I'm going to kind of lay that down, so I can press that, and then, I can't see that, but I'm going to, Okay, so the brown is our sleeve, and this is our body, so pretty sides, pretty sides, so you can see that this is a lot longer than the, the body part, so I'm going to pull that, and see I just gave it a, yeah, outside, held down up here where it's where I want it, pulled the outside, come down, push my finger down on it, hold it down. Now I'm going to stick my little clip in there and um, to get it held right there. And because I don't want that to slide, I'm going to put another one back here. Um, well, and I went too far. See now, I got a gape on the inside. So no, that ain't no good. But that's just what you gotta do. You just gotta kind of weasel on, weasel and weasel on, until you get stuff stretched around and stuff wants to wants to see here. I'm, it's got kind of a bulk right there. I'm gonna pull, get that to kind of settle down in there, pinch it down, slap a clip on it. Just keep after it all the way around. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll try to work everything from the top down between these two teeth marks in the top on both sides, and then I'll loosen this up here, um, take this clip off, and then kind of work this around again down at the bottom then we should be should be good so that's just all it's going to take is just keeping after it until somebody gives up either you get it done because you kept after it persistent 
or you give up for a while and take a break and come back later. So, I think that's not looking too bad. I mean, it's not perfect yet, but but we can start sewing that. I, I'm thinking that this will be okay. We may do a little more refining on it, stick a few more clips in, but as we start sewing this and holding everything where it needs to be, it will, for the most part, fall in line where we want it to be. So, this has got a lot of clips, so I'm gonna, it doesn't cost anything to use them. I'm gonna go ahead and see what happens if we start getting it clipped together. Yeah, see that? Okay, that's there. But if I grab it here and then give it a pull, push push with my thumb in the middle of that and pull, that'll kind of close up. And I think it'll close up enough that once we uh, start getting some stitches on there, it's going to look all right. We're still pretty good right there. That didn't move. We're looking pretty fair. Um, I'm going to stop and I'm going to start working this side. Um, we're still right where we need to be. Uh, that hasn't moved. It's right there and that's flush. So I'm going to come down here. Oh. we got to be Stretching this inside one a little. Ooh, and it doesn't want to stretch. Yeah. That may give us issues. I didn't pay attention. Well, I cut it out of what I could get the best use of the material. Um. I didn't think about which way it's going to stretch. Right, so, let's find the middle point of that. Clip it. Work some, work some extra space down from up here. Yeah, I think so. Try this trick again. There we go. I got some extra bulk right there, but maybe we can get that out in a minute. It's getting better. And what do we got here? Still need to stay there. And good thing about it is when we get this one done, we only have one more to do.
And still. And that may, I may wind up as that goes. Um, I'm gonna come on down here. That's looking good. Got a little bit of a buckle right there. Got a little buckle right there on that side. So I'm just going to try to split the difference on that. For right now. And see, here we got the extra down here that we could use up there, but these don't line up. So I'm wondering, perhaps, maybe my thinking is incorrect on the teeth lining up. I'm going to offset it. I don't know. And whatever the case is, if I offset it like that here, then I gotta do it on the other sleeve too. I don't know. But there's where we're at so far. So this would be an MAB good as I can get. There. So, so if we look at it from this side, here is our sleeve on the body of her jacket. Mm. I don't think, I think I need to split this back like it originally had it. I really think that that's supposed to, I th really think that those teeth got it, should be. Yeah, maybe. They seem to line up pretty good, and this pretty much fell in line, but there's a little bulk extra here, so if I split that difference the same way here, okay, so I'm going to try that. See, I've got the three on the inside, I'm going to line this tooth up. Instead of having these two set in those slots, I'm just going to, I don't know, because that's where it was, and that sure didn't work. So I'm just going to put this tooth, one tooth off towards the shoulder, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side here. Which, no, not, because that'll make this worse.
Well, better put something back here. I'm leaving this side alone. I think as we sew that, we'll be able to fill those gaps in. I'm going with my original theory of splitting those teeth apart. It'll probably be kind of bunchy, I don't know. Okay, well, that's kind of how I think it should be done. And mind you, I've never made a coat before, so don't pay any attention to what I say to do, because it's probably not the right way to do it. Might as well use all the clips I got. Here's where we go. This one's turned right side out. This one's still sitting like came. Sewed it around. Um, a little bit closer stitch than what I used on the other, but um, that's what I've got. So I'm gonna. Probably trim that back um, a little bit so it's not so much seam there. But um, there's some some of these going on. So this is what it looks like turned around. So this would be the apparently I believe this would be the left. Left sleeve, because this is the front. See, there's my thin spot. But that's the way it looks, and I think there's a little pucker there. But, but back here is more. However, there is good news. This part, once these are hammered out, these seams are trimmed and hammered. I don't think you're going to really see them. And then back here, this is indeed the back, my cape is going to cover that up. But I think these will clean up with a little hammering. So, there's my uh, seams that I've hammered down. What I wound up doing, I, I didn't use a dowel. I just took them to my workbench and um, laid them flat and just 